To begin this project, download the music print zip file and place it inside the folder with your name on it. As with the other projects, double click this folder and we can uncompress the music folder and we need to add our name to the end of it. Now when we open the music folder, there's going to be a variety of different images and file types. We've got JPEGs, we've got Illustrator files, and we've got the new Photoshop file that we'll be working in. So to get started on the project, let's launch Adobe Photoshop. And I've already reset the preferences for Photoshop. This means that it's going to open up as if it was the first time we've ever launched it. If yours looks like this, there's a couple of panels that we don't need to have open. So I'm going to go over to the Learn panel and drag it off and then close it out. And then also the Libraries panel. I should drag off and close those. Also, if you see any other blue panels that pop up for helpful hints, you can simply close those off. We won't be needing any of those. To get started, let's go to File, down to Open, and let's locate the folder that our music images are uh, found in. Mine's on the desktop. Here's the folder with my name on it. Here's my music folder. And the first one they want us to open is the Sunrise JPEG. We'll click Open. And notice that this image fills the screen and we can see which image we're working on at the top left-hand corner with the name of that, uh, that file. The first thing we need to do is to resize this image. Go up to Image, down to Image Size, and in the resulting dialog box, we can see that the original size of this is 68 by 45 inches, but it has a low resolution of 72 pixels per inch. The first thing the book's going to have us do is to change the resolution of this. With resample still checked on, if I add more resolution to it, it's going to increase the size of our document, but it's not going to increase the physical size of it. In other words, it's going to add more pixels, but it's going to keep it the same height and width. Hold down Option and click Reset. This will bring it back to its normal setting. If we turn off Resample, this will keep all of these uh, linked together. Now if I change the resolution to 300, you'll notice it also changes the height and the width. This means that if we increase the resolution of something, we're going to decrease the height and width of this. And usually this is what you want to do to keep the best quality for your images. With that done, we can hit OK. And let's go up and save our artwork. We'll go to File, down to Save As. For the name of this, we're going to call this CD Artwork. And remember to add your name to the end of this. For the format, change it to Photoshop. This should be the top format. And we'll click Save and continue on to the next part of the exercise. Now the next thing we need to do is to crop our image to fit inside of a 10 by 10 area plus bleed. Now in Photoshop, you can't automatically add a bleed edge the way we did for Illustrator and the way we will do for InDesign. So when we crop, we need to compensate and add an extra eighth of an inch on all the sides. To find the crop tool, look at the top of your toolbox. The tool looks like this. And when you select it, it'll give you a bounding box going around your image. And when you click on the edges of this bounding box, it'll activate the crop tool and it'll give you some little grids inside of here. Let's click on the right center handle and drag it in until it says 10.25. Let's make sure to get it exactly that number. We'll take a little bit of finesse. There it is right there. I'll zoom out. Let's pull the top center one down until it says 10.25 as well. Right there. Now we haven't committed to any cropping just yet. We can click on the center and then drag it inward and you could still move around your image to crop it exactly where we want it to go. So let's pull her image off to the left hand side. Right about there looks good. And before we hit return, let's make sure delete crop pixels is checked on. We can hit enter or return and that'll commit to the final crop that we have. 
Now let's place some guidelines to indicate where our bleed and margins need to be. And there's a couple of different ways we can do this. The first method is by going to View and down to the very bottom and choose New Guide Layout. With New Guide Layout, this will automatically set up a series of guides for your document. We don't want it to be in columns, so uncheck this, but we do want to have a margin around all of the edges. Let's type in an eighth of an inch on all sides. So we're going to do 0.125 on the top, bottom, left, and right. This will give us an eighth of an inch, and this will represent our bleed edge. We'll say OK to that. Now let's go to View and zoom in to 100%. And then let's go to the top left corner. If your rulers are not turned on the way mine are, let's go to View and do Rulers. And this will give us a ruler at the top and left-hand side of our page. Another way you can create margins is by clicking on a ruler and dragging down. I want to add a margin that's a quarter of an inch just past the guides that we have. So we need to reset our zero point. If you click at the top corner, left corner, right where the two rulers are intersecting, click on it and drag, you can reset your, uh, your origin point. And let's place this right where our two guides meet, so right there. Now that our zero point is right at our origin, we can click on the top ruler and drag down until it says 0.25. Right there. Let's click on the left ruler and drag over until it says 0.25. Right there. So now we've added a quarter or yeah, a quarter inch margin just past the bleed edge. To reset your origin, double click on the cor the corner of where your two rulers meet. This will reset our origin. And let's zoom back out by hitting Command and 0. And the final way we can create guides is by telling it exactly where to go. We'll go back to View and down to choose New Guide. And let's place a horizontal guide at 9.875. We'll say OK. So this places a horizontal guide a quarter inch from the bottom. We'll go back to View and do a new guide. And let's now place a vertical guide at 9.875. This will put a guide to the right-hand side of our document. This is a good time to save, so let's go to File and Save and continue on to the next part. Now the next couple of exercises are going to show you some different methods of bringing in images to your existing Photoshop document. To get started, let's go to File and down to Open. And the first one they want us to choose is the Tornado JPEG. Choose Open. And when you open an image, notice the top left hand side, there are two different tabs now. The tab we are working on will be Bold. And if you click on the other tab, it can swap to the other document. Later on, you'll see that you can click on a tab and drag it off and have two images opened in the same window. But for now, I'm just going to keep both of these nested together. What we want to do with this image is to select only a portion of the image and copy it and paste it into our existing Photoshop document. To do this, let's choose our rectangle marquee. If you don't see the rectangle marquee, it's at the top of your toolbox and it may be nested or hiding underneath the elliptical marquee. With rectangle marquee selected, check out the options in your control panel. First off, there's different modes that we can work in. There's new selection mode, which is the first one. There's add to and subtract from selections and also an intersect. By default, we always want to have this first new selection always selected. Additionally, keep feather at zero pixels and the style will be set to normal. To select a certain area, all you have to do is to click and drag over that area and you can see a little highlighted marquee will start to appear. Sometimes this is called marching ants. As long as I'm holding down my mouse, I can change up the size of this selection. And you'll also see there's a width and a height located next to my cursor. We want to have a width of about 20 and a half pixels, so that right there is pretty good. And when I let go, you can see it commits to this particular selection. 
if you wanna subtract away from a selection, like let's say I've got way too much selected up here at the top. Let's go back to our control panel and choose this third option to subtract away. And with this, you can see my cursor now has a little minus sign. What I wanna do is to click and drag and you can see I get another selected area and we wanna have a height of about two inches. So right about here, when I let go, you can see this now subtracts away from the selected area that we have. Now everything that's inside of the marquee is what I can affect. And so what I want to do is to go to Edit and Copy. Now I can jump back into my CD artwork and go to Edit and Paste. Now whenever you paste something into Photoshop, check out your Layers panel. This will give it its own new layer, and by default, it'll always place that layer on top of whatever we had. In this case, this was our silhouette of the background. Now that this is done, let's go to File and Save. And since this is the first time we've saved the Photoshop file with a layer, make sure Maximize Compatibility is checked on and say OK. Now let's move on to the next section. To create a feathered selection, let's go to File and Open, and let's choose the Lightning JPEG. We'll say Open, and I'm also going to close out my Tornado JPEG, simply because I don't need it anymore. The tool we're going to use is the Lasso tool. This is located towards the top of your toolbox, and it looks like a cowboy's lasso. Do be aware that there are some other kinds of lassos. We're just going to be using the regular lasso tool. As with the Marquee tool, make sure you're working in New Selection Mode and your feather for now is set to 0 pixels. To make a selection with the Lasso tool, all you have to do is click and drag and this will create a line that follows your cursor. So we're going to click and drag around the lightning. When we get towards the bottom, be careful not to touch the edge of your page. Then we'll go up and all I want to do is to outline my lightning area. Now we get to the right hand side, it's okay to go off the edge and also off to the top until we get back to our starting point. When we do, we can release and you can see you've got your marching ants marquee that goes around your selection. Now by default, the selection that we have has a very hard edge to its pixels. You can see the edge of this if you click on the quick mask mode. Look at the very bottom of your toolbox for this icon. When we choose Edit Quick Mask Mode, everything that's in red is not selected, but everything that's not in red is what we can copy and paste and work with then. I'm going to click on Quick Mask Mode again. Now let's feather the edge. If we go to Select, down to Modify, choose Feather, this will bring up the feather options, and we want to edit or in, uh, feather this by 100 pixels. We'll say OK. Now it looks like it didn't make too much of a change, but let's go back into quick mask mode. Again, click on the little icon at the bottom of your toolbox. Notice the edge of this is much, much softer. Working with soft edges makes it easier to transition and to blend one layer with another layer. Let's go back into normal mode, so I'm going to click on Quick Mask again. Now we can go to Edit and Copy. We'll jump back into our CD artwork, go to Edit and Paste. And you can see it's pasted in here with our nice feathered edge, and it also has its own layer down here at the bottom. We can jump back to our Lightning and then close this out. If it asks you to save, simply say Don't Save but we do want to go to File and let's save up our CD artwork page. Now let me show you what happens when we open a vector file in Photoshop. If we go to File and Open, locate the HHT logo. This is an Adobe Illustrator file, so when we click Open, it needs to convert the vector format into pixels. In order to do this, under the Import PDF options, Let's crop it to the bounding box and make sure the resolution is set to 300 pixels per inch. We can say OK. And this will give you a Photoshop document that has a little checkerboard background wherever there is transparency. 
Now to move this into our Photoshop document, I want to see both of them side by side. To set up this, we can go to Window, down to Workspace, excuse me, Arrange, and choose Two Up Vertical. This will place both of our documents side by side. The tool we want to use next is our Move tool. And this looks like the little double arrows at the top of your toolbox. You can click on the artwork on the left hand side and drag it into the document on the right. And when you let go of your mouse tool, notice that it places it into our artwork and it also gives it its own nice layer. Once we're finished, we can close out the HHT logo and if it asks you to save, just say don't save. This is a good time to save up your CD cover artwork, so let's go to File and Save It and continue on. The final way we can bring in images is to place them into Photoshop. If we go to File and choose Place Embedded, we need to choose the title text Photoshop document and choose Place. Notice that this gives a bounding box around the artwork we have selected. To lock it in, choose the return key. And now check out our layers panel. It's got its own layer that has the title of the document and an additional little icon on the little preview. This means that it's a smart object layer. Now that we're done with this, we're finished up with the first section. Let's go to File and do one last save and move on to section two.